A very good morning to all of you. So we have gathered here today for the introductory session of the Embedded Machine Learning for Edge Computing, offered to you by Skillsurf in collaboration with the University of Moritu. We are very proud to say that this is brought to you for the second time. The first iteration was extremely successful and we got a lot of positive feedback from the participants. Hopefully we would be able to hear from one of the excep exceptional participants from the previous iteration today as well. This is what we have in store for you today. We would be covering all the details of how the course would be conducted, how to get enrolled, and the content that we would be covering and the final outcomes you would be able to achieve by the end of this course. First of all, I would like to invite uh, the former head of the Department of Electronic and Telecommunication Engineering of University of Moritua and senior lecturer, Dr. Ranga Rodrigo, to address the gathering. He completed his bachelor's in Electronic and Telecommunication Telecom Engineering from University of Moritua in 2001 and completed his PhD in Computer Vision from the Western University of Canada in 2008. So I warmly welcome you and cordially invite you to address this session. Thank you, Chatuni, for the introduction. As you all know, machine learning and artificial intelligence has um, overwhelmed the world. Uh, so everyone, every organization, every company, every government organization uh, thinks about how to adapt this artificial intelligence. Uh, so when we think about some of those people who are uh, trying to do this in organizations, they have not had first-hand experience on these technologies. Uh, that means uh, they have not used these technologies by themselves. They have not implemented any network uh, that uses artificial intelligence, but they have gathered uh, information uh, from other sources, unfortunately. Uh, so as a result, uh, the work that can be achieved by them is uh, very much limited. But in contrast, if you truly get your hands on uh, with these technologies, if you truly understand how to implement one of these things, if you truly understand how to get a device also working with one of these things, uh, the uh, contribution that you can make to any organization or any policy development will be 10 times better than what you can do. Actually, it will be very fruitful for that organization. Actually, uh, when you study, we have been studying for perhaps O levels, A levels, and sometimes even in universities, and we have been uh, going through existing literature, existing books, existing lecture notes, and we have been sometimes memorizing material, especially during O-level time. If you are, have done uh, uh, O-level in Sri Lanka, we have been memorizing. Uh, so after we do that, the knowledge that we gathered cannot be applied to solve a real-world problem. What is the way to be able to apply our knowledge in real world and get some outcome out of that, that is to engage in projects. Engaging in projects is the one sure and only way uh, to experience the knowledge that you have and to make something useful to the mankind out of that. Now, this is the key difference between the knowledge paradigms that have come into the picture in the internet age. The, knowledge, the power of knowledge has lost its value because knowledge is freely available. But the ability to apply knowledge has a lot of value. So therefore, this is what we want to do through this program. We want to teach you the basics of uh, AI, basics of NMIL, and get you to do projects in that so that your understanding will be full. So with those seeds planted in your minds, when you actually implement a project, going beyond that and doing better and greater projects uh, is uh, possible for you. So uh, the second-hand knowledge versus first-hand knowledge and knowledge that you get from books versus the knowledge that you get from projects. Uh, these are entirely different things. Uh, so this is the invitation that we give for you uh, through this course. One more important thing about knowledge is, uh, as Sri Lanka does not truly have the economic conditions for people with knowledge to flourish, it is very hard to start some uh, knowledge-based enterprise in Sri Lanka, as you know. 
sometimes we feel that learning something and being able to do projects is not too useful. But I can assure you, outside the borders of Sri Lanka, you don't have to physically go outside. Outside the borders of Sri Lanka mean engaging with work while you are in Sri Lanka with businesses overseas. Those present you humongous amount of opportunities if you have the knowledge and if you can get something done. So through this course, I'm sure a lot of people are joining from different countries. I know uh, Keith Min uh, is joining from British Columbia. Pamaditi is joining from uh, Sydney. Dr. Charles and Chatuni are joining from here. So there are other uh, lecturers also who are, who are joining from different parts of the world. So they have a lot of experience in this. And I think they have understood the power of knowledge and power, power of the ability to apply knowledge outside the borders of Sri Lanka. So hopefully they will be able to reveal you these things also and connect you uh, with different ways of how to engage with work and make something out of that so that economically it is better for you and for our country and for your families. So these are the things that we have in mind when we uh, uh, teach this course on machine learning for embedded systems. So Dr. Charles is in charge of this course. Dr. Charles studied uh, at Morocco University and following that he studied in uh, the University of Florida in the US. So he comes with a lot of experience in security in these cyber physical systems and applying these machine learning technologies in them. Uh, so he has uh, carefully crafted this course uh, for you to truly gain knowledge. So my uh, request for you uh, is uh, fully engaged with all these eight days of uh, course and do these projects by yourself. If you do these projects by yourself, uh, your knowledge will be concrete and you will be very happy about yourself and you will, you will see a change of thinking about yourself in life uh, if you are doing a project for the first time by yourself. And through this course, they will enable you to uh, gain that experience. Now, I had to talk about why we do this uh, in, in the department. So uh, we have um, a huge repository of knowledge at the electronics department. Uh, I think you know that uh, our department uh, is a forefront, uh, the flagship department of uh, engineering in our country and maybe in the region. Uh, so we have a knowledge base and we want to make that knowledge available to as many people as possible. Uh, so you know that due to the number of seats available in our department, we cannot recruit more than what we can right now as undergraduates. So, but our knowledge is there. So we want to take parts of our knowledge, which is very useful for the people and let you also have that knowledge. And some of you need the certificate. And this is why these kind of courses have been designed. Uh, so we are very happy uh, to make our knowledge available to you. And uh, uh, we are very happy that you decided to uh, be connected with this course. I'm very sure that if you truly engage with this course, uh, the benefits that you will get will be very large. So I'm thankful to all those who are uh, connected with the course, including Dr. Subodh Charles, and, and the controls back over to Chatuni. Thank you very much. I wish you all the very best. Thank you very much for the share of thoughts, sir. Like you said, uh, the lecture panel uh, that we have gathered for this course this time is consisted of people from all around the world. So this could be a great opportunity for you to get engaged and get different perspectives uh, in this electronic and telecommunication industry and also machine learning. Yes. Thank you, Next, I would like to in, like to introduce the guest speaker for the day. He's an electronic engineer at Zone 24-7 in Sri Lanka. He completed his bachelor's in information technology and electronics from University of Colombo. He is currently pursuing a master's degree in data science and AI from University of Maritur. And he completed the embedded machine learning for edge computing 2022 course. So I would like to invite Mr. Sandaruan Madamulla to uh, welcome you as the guest speaker for the day. Right. Uh, thank you, Chatuni. Uh, hope you can hear me. Yeah. Right. Okay. So uh, I will share my screen.
right right uh, embedded machine learning for HD computers Anthony, can you see my presentation also yes we okay, can see thanks. So I'm Sandaran Madhushank Madhamulla. So I'm working as an electronic engineer, as Shafsi mentioned. And uh, I completed the machine learning and edge computers uh, in this course in 2022. Uh, that's the major thing I want to mention. So what is embedded system and artificial intelligence? So it's a very interesting uh, domain. Uh, so, the when we comes to the embedded system, I'm working as my uh, working career. So I'm working as electronic engineer, and usually I'm uh, we are working in uh, most uh, popular edge devices, and uh, also I'm working. Uh, uh, now we are working at the medical device. Also, I will uh, explain in next slide. And uh, I'm doing my master in machine learning and data science in University of Moratua. So those two domain is fashion of me to integrate, to find a solution uh, while we work in the industrial domain. So we are facing, when we face facing some uh, roadblocks uh, in the working uh, projects. So I usually, uh, try to find a solution using machine learning. That's very interesting. So, first of all, uh, what are the edge computers? The edge computers are different, different types. So, low performance edge devices, we have STM32, uh, Arduino, Nano, BLE modules. This is a, we can call as a low performance edge devices. And uh, medium performance edge devices is uh, Raspberry Pi. I hope you know. And we can get the high performance edge devices as uh, Jetson Nano, Jetson series. Also, very high performance edge devices is uh, RTX 3090 GPU module. Uh, we can use as edge devices. The thing is, we have to pick this particular uh, different different modules uh, uh, with our use case. That's the important thing because. Uh, when we de de develop some IoT device, we have to think about the power consumptions, data communication, network bandwidth. We have to think a lot of things. Considering those things, we have to pick them what is the most similar, suitable uh, edge device for our project. Uh, so you have to understand what are the uh, edge devices uh, with the, their performance, right? So. This is a very important topic. Why machine learning? AI for edge devices. Why we uh, develop machine learning algorithms and theories inside of the edge devices? That's very important. To, uh, you have to clearly understand before the following this course. Right? So I pick uh, some WordPress from the Edge Impulse. It's a very most popular website for the uh, in this domain. So we can produce such as prediction fast and without a need to transmit a large amount of raw data across the network. What is the mean of this? So I will explain using two practical scenario why we use edge devices and why we include the machine learning theory inside of the edge device. You have to clearly understand. So uh, this is my first scenario and also I will ask you uh, ask a question from you, right? So, unmanned aerial vehicle. I hope you were very familiar with the UAVs. Is an unmanned automatically uh, flying this un uh, this vehicle? The one, my one case is the there is a camera in the uh, unmanned vehicle, and there is a main control and main engine. We can define as a very high level. High level. There are three component in the drone. So the task is drone should be maintained the one kilometer distance between ground. 
don't have to don't have to fly maintain the 1 km dis distance between the ground so drone have to identify the objects in the ground and maintain the distance mainly drone have to identify the mountains and when he reach the mountain before drone have to go upper state and after reaching the mountain do, drone have to go to the down state and maintain the 1 km distance that's the task right we can do this task using uh, two options the one thing is we have to real time video processing because we have got the uh, a video from the camera and we have to real time processing and calculate the distance and we have to uh, identify the objects real time what are what are the components inside uh, on the ground mountains when we reach the mountain we have to don't have to go to the upper state so don't have to identify the correctly mountain and distance so this is a very high performance process in the machine learning the video processing is a very we want more gpu power to process the uh, video so one option is drone can record the video real time and send to the main server in uh, main server uh, we can locate in the ground uh, the main server and uh, drone can communicate with the network through the network and drone uh, main controller record the camera images videos and send to the main control main server and processing the video and main server send to the action to the drone uh, uh, as action goes to the upper state goes to the down, down state considering the uh, ground level situation that's the one way the second way is drone is a main controller and record the video and processing the live inside of the main controller and take the action take the action to the main engine and control the drone hope you can understand my uh, scenario right so what is the most suitable and most practical one one image one no one image two uh, you can put in your answer in chat box or uh, anyone can unmute and uh, you can say what's the most suitable scenario most suitable and most uh, practical scenario is this because the when we go into the one image one option is not practical because very speedily drone is going and record the video and send into the main server it's there is a delay bandwidth we have to consider in the bandwidth when it's come to the drone to the uh, top of the forest there is no internet connection so we can't con uh, control uh, connect with the main server and we cannot get the actions so there is we have we we face a uh, lot of problems uh, when we go into the one way so this is the practical thing is to we we can record the videos and we can process inside of the drone that's why we have to use edge computers this is not the edge device this is the edge device if we can process very speedily without any uh, third party dependencies definitely we have to choose uh, edge devices and we have we can integrate the machine learning algorithm inside of the edge device that's the main main uh, reason why we learn machine learning and why we include the machine learning theory inside of the edge device right hope you can understand my point my second scenario is second thing is we are going to develop a iot device or we are going to uh, develop a animal recognition camera so camera can identify the animals and their behaviors and after the identification animal uh, recognition details the uh, the main control should be serve the details in the uh, memory so we can do this task like like previous task record the video from the main controller and send it to the third party server and process in the video and get the feedback get the action from the main controller to the uh, from the main server to the main controller but when we implement this solution inside of the amazon forest is it practical is not practical because uh, inside of in, in the middle of the amazon forest 
there are no internet connection i hope so we can can't communicate that party server high performance server so we have to process the video inside of the our main controller because we can't use any huge of gpu computer as well we can't use because there are no power we have to get power from the solar panel definitely when we go into in, integrate the middle of the uh, amazon forest so we have to optimize the performance of the computer and we have to integrate inside of the machine learning algorithms to classify the image mainly process the image so that's why we use the edge computers and we want to integrate uh, uh, develop machine learning learning algorithms and ai algorithm inside of the uh, our edge device that the second uh, use case of the use case of the uh, edge device ai edge device right hope you can understand my second scenario as well and now i am going to very interesting thing how we integrate our ai model inside of the coffee machine so this is my own coffee machine and i will show you the interesting of the ai so coffee machine is a embedded device right coffee machine has a controller and controller uh, include the microcontroller it's a uh, edge device so i will show you the video and hope you can see here I don't know the sound is clear or not, but uh, the coffee machine work with my uh, voices. I say, uh, please on the coffee machine. A coffee machine on uh, recognizing my uh, voice commands, right? It's turned on. Then I will give a give a command as a make a cappuccino, right? So coffee machine start make a cappuccino. Uh, I developed this project to my MSc project as well. So this is a NLP module, natural language processing, the identification, the natural language and uh, take actions. Uh, if you can learn machine learning theories with edge devices, you can do these very interesting things. So yeah, that's the real uh, example in my life. And other one is the most, uh, uh, other, my second experience in the, in the SLRC robotics competition. So we have to follow the world and uh, we choose the sharp sensors to the follow the world. And in my university period, I integrate some uh, statistic algorithms inside of the Arduino board because uh, mainly, uh, you know, uh, normal uh, traditional programming and machine learning programming. We have both traditional programming and machine learning programming. Traditional programming comes from the linear algebra. There is a very uh, linear algebra equation. When we develop the, when we program using any programming language, the linear algebra method, it called uh, the traditional programming. When we develop uh, statistics theory, statistics and probabilistics uh, theories using any kind of programming language, we can call machine learning. That's why machine learning and traditional programming comes, right? I 
include the data collecting, data information, curve fitting, the basic machine learning theory inside of the Arduino board, I can able to the this curve come from the uh, sharp sensor and I can able to uh, make as a linear inputs and we can easy to control the motor. That's the achievement of my life using the machine theory and edge devices and very smoothly robot move follow the wall. And our robot is the uh, most speed robot that follow the wall in 2017. I hope the surgery robot is completion. That's my second use case. I apply the machine learning theory inside of the edge devices and I can able to go to second place of the robotics competition. I think Kitmin is here. Kitmin's team is the first place in 2017, right? So going to my uh, next slide. Right. My other advantage of this uh, H module. So I mentioned uh, to you about slide. I did uh, machine learning and H device uh, in, in this course 2022 and I apply to the practical uh, our practical we did the practical in our 2020 uh, machine learning for devices course and I enhance this uh, practical uh, test to the my machine my MSc project also that's why the this course impact to my future career it's that's very good, right? So I, uh, this call, module called Advanced Data Mining Module. So I make uh, some uh, device and submit to my uh, MSc Advanced Data Mining Project as the using uh, Nano 33 BLE. Hope you can learn this module in this course, uh, in the end of this course, uh, I think. So this is the this is also human recognition activity module. Uh, in the uh, in 2022 we did uh, just a dissection using this module, but I enhance those kind of technologies to the recognize human all activity detection. So after the collecting data using this module, I use some classification methods to find uh, what are the uh, human activities. I make a, a small device using the Arduino Nano uh, BL module, 33 module. And uh, uh, this is a microcontroller and uh, this is a uh, power supply. In this section, uh, we collect the data from the uh, edge devices uh, and accelerometer and gyroscope data. This is my uh, final year, uh, final presentation of the my master. Uh, this is a very important thing. Uh, this is the uh, activity. Uh, that I follow, the running, standing, sitting, walking, upper state, down state. In this device can identify very correctly what are the activity that uh, I do. So to do this, uh, I use classification methods uh, to classify the data. Uh, I want to mention in this topic, to in the machine learning and device course is very helpful for me to in my future career. Hope you guys can also support it, support this course to uh, grow your future career. Right. So. Uh, it's, this is another very interesting thing. Uh, how we apply the machine learning algorithms 
for our office work. Right. Uh, in this section is is also very interesting. So I will explain in Singhara to uh, explain more about this project. So this is a medical device. Uh, this day we are doing in our office. This is from client from the USA. Uh, the patient, uh, the patient, we are focused to the lymphedema patients. There is a infection called lymphedema. So we are developed this device for the lymphedema. So we are in the this uh, air chain, air sleeve in uh, lymphedema patients. Uh, we pressurize each chambers using the air pump, measuring the real time pressure sensors. So, what may sense taking up data read karnagaman may sleeves bottom to top up a pressure karana step by step. At the quarter, patient get lymphedema situation like a ticket ticket would at a press villa acre acatama treatment. I make a thing. So, the issue comes from the uh, air pump. The issue is when we pump to the uh, air to the chambers, there is two uh, pressure type, dynamic pressure and static pressure. Up the pressure reach karan on a hundred mmsg, up pressurize karagan yana, hundred mmsg reach karabam stop karna. Up issue a hundred mmg read when a pressurize karnagama, dynamic pressure. When we stop the motor, so automatically goes to the pressure as the lower than 100. That's the issue. Patient abhi hari pressure then no 100 mmsg. Abhi pressure karaga ne dynamic pressure ka tamabata sensor ne motor ka vada karna kote. Abhi stop karabu gama static pressure ka ta tag. 80, 80, 80 vage mmsg vage pras adu ena. Ito rok. So tamai abar dibar problem me. Abhi office se ke abhi loku time ya kin investigate kara me prashne kisan na. Ethakota api Palavini uh Palavini option Nagatamai, Api Hoyna dynamic pressure, static pressure gather relationship between the relationship it be found. A can be data collect kala may data points uh deca varga deca tiano, dynamic pressure, static pressure gather relationship pick up hoela, api karane, static pressure again non cotent the credit karano linear non linear regression model lagging. It was a pressure record, a dynamic pressure again. Eva gave a solution negative. But after develop that particular solution inside of the edge devices, the main problem come after that. The main problem negative. A big current US client may device a hard nega with a right. A bay air tamay may sleeve wake up when a client when a supply can again. Air when a supply can again may chain make a gut the hammer, a ketian. Materials and may air tubes will a material type a thicker. A pre trained carabu may model like a parameter so coma aulano, egatamai, a pre face carabu, devani loco problem. A pre device seca may be had a pre may they got a relationship with Hadala, device seca tune current, a pigaw in a sleeve. A by a device seca send carata pass, US client when a supply can again got no chamber. It would take a material like a dependent on. Api method in the data points collect color had the boo relationship. Egatama but the one pressure. There are Pikoma they catch you karan karek in a discuss karana gota. Uh Mata Tibuna machine learning knowledge check at the maga suggestion negatama yet ramapi than the use karani. Ekatama api may slave a connect karat a pass a device again. Api pack when I'm a trained in the no device a winam. I thought a karani device a pesagarana a pesagarana inflate karno deflate karno. Within one hour, a other tour may have data collect Kerala and pressure sensor can collect Kerala data. A bit non linear regression model hacking this particular sleeve a gutter, a bit fit Kerala, a bit hoino relationship pega, dynamic pressure guy, static pressure guy. In this scenario, I want to mention how we solve the real world problem using machine learning and rich computers. That's a real, I, I hope you real. Example for you because I apply for the in my office in this uh, machine learning uh, algorithm inside of the edge devices. We use STM32 H750 microcontroller, it's a very uh, low performance uh, microcontroller relatively other edge uh, devices, right? So we implement this and 
uh, we are testing now, it's working. Right? So, uh, in my last, most last slide, uh, I will uh, show, uh, discuss the most popular AI devices in the world. Those are the some most popular devices, Google Assistant, you know, Apple Watch, uh, Alexa, Vector Robot, and this is the main thing, Rabbit device. Uh, because those, those uh, all components have uh, machine learning algorithms to Vector Robot can identify our speech, and Apple Watch can identify our motions, and also Alexa and Google Assistant also can identify our uh, speech commands. And Rabbit can do a lot of things. And the main thing is, inside of the Rabbit device, they implement large action model. This is a very uh, complex uh, theory in the machine learning. Large action models, large language model, LLM we can call. So they include the L large language, large action model inside of the edge device. That's very good achievement of the edge device field, edge device domain. So they can this device can recognize the action using the camera. This very small device, and uh, this in the future our uh, each device our future is uh, we have to integrate LLM. LLM has a billion parameters. So we it's a very critical to in include the small edge devices. But we can optimize LLM and we can implement inside of these devices. That's our future. That's very interesting. You know, chat GPT, you can ask any question and you, um, you, can, uh, you can receive the answers. Think in this process, we can include the edge devices. It's very interesting, right? So that is my presentation today, presentation. Uh, if you have any question, you can ask from me now. And, uh, Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, Sandar um, Wan. Yeah. yeah, it was a really good presentation. Uh, thank you so much for sharing and uh, accepting our invitation. Uh, being the keynote speaker for today. Um, okay, so yeah, you can stop sharing the screen and uh, we can hand over um, back to Dr. Subodha. Uh, I think he can cover the logistics of the uh, session, uh, the course, and um, we'll take questions at the end of the... Dr. Subodha? Yes, I'm here. Uh, I was trying to turn on my video. It says, okay, give me one second. I think because I connected through another device. Oh, yeah. okay. I, I think you can do it too. now. Right. Let's see. Oh, that works. Perfect. All right. So, welcome, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on a Sunday morning to go through uh, the content that we plan to cover in this module. Uh, so thank you, Kit Kitmin, for the intro. I'm Subodha. I'm one of the supervisors of the project and uh, currently working as a senior lecturer at ENPC. Uh, so the purpose of my presentation as well, let me share the screen while I'm talking. Uh, the purpose of my uh, this particular session, so we'll conclude with this. We'll also have time to take questions. Uh, the purpose is to tell you what the course logistics are. So basically what you will get uh, by taking part in this module. That is what I will mainly touch on. So let me share my screen. All right. Hope you can see it by now. And the interest of uh, making sure that everybody can hear me clearly, I will keep the video turned off so that uh, what matters is that you see the screen and you can hear what I have to say. Right. So we already have some questions coming up in the chat. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll take breaks in the middle of this conversation and answer the questions and we'll have time at the end as well to answer a few questions. 
so as I mentioned, I'm currently working as a senior lecturer. I graduated from the same department, ENTC, and I completed my PhD mainly in the area of embedded system security at the University of Florida. So questions, we already have a few questions coming up in the chat, we'll answer them. And also you can use this link and the QR code. Uh, let me send this in the chat as well, so that once I move to the next slide, you can still see it. Uh, you have to go to menti.com and then add the code 72748672. Go to menti.com you will be asked to enter a code and the code is also available in the chat. So once you do that, you will get an interface where you can type your questions and submit. That's only one method. Of course, you can send questions in the Zoom chat and you can also unmute and speak. Both of those options are perfectly fine. So we'll be using this time to walk you through what you will learn in this course. Uh, what is the outline? What are the course projects that we'll touch on? So to go there, we first need to set a bit of context. So when you look at the large area of embedded systems, we can see that everywhere. It's all around us, whether you look at automobiles, medical, entertainment, home automation, I'm pretty sure you are using at least one or most probably more of these applications in your day-to-day -day life. So it's regarded as the future of computing because right now people are moving away from general purpose computing into very application specific computing. So we'll understand what the difference between those two are, general purpose versus embedded to application specific. When you look at embedded systems, there is a lot to learn. So of course, we'll not be able to cover the entirety of embedded systems in a course like this. What we plan to do is cover one subsection. To break down embedded systems into four main areas, we can look at one, the embedded hardware or the computer architecture side of things. So in this course, we'll be, we'll be using a hardware platform. That hardware platform, we are not going to teach you how to design that hardware platform. That is done by someone else. What we do in this course is to use that hardware platform to program it so that it can do what we want it to do. So that designing component of the hardware platform, that is where computer architecture and embedded hardware comes into the picture. So that is one area that those who are interested, you can explore, but that will not happen in this course. Area number two is the programming and the software side of things. That is our focus. And when we say programming and, and software, it is not limited to edge computing. There are so many other things that we can discuss when, we, when it comes to programming and software and embedded systems. Then we have the communication side of things. That's number three, where we talk about the on-chip as well as external communications. It can be some wired connections. It can be on-chip interconnects. It can be wireless communication. Whatever that is, communication plays a major role in embedded systems. And then finally, we have the enclosure design side of things. This is what makes your products beautiful. Because if you can see the internal electronics and all that, that might not be very nice. So you cover that with nice enclosures, you make it user friendly, you make it look like a real product. So out of those four areas that you can specialize in, our focus, as I mentioned, is here, is on the programming and the software side of things. So with that background, let's move on to edge computing. So edge computing, as you might have understood by now, that is one subsection that comes under programming and software. I can go on and on about why edge computing is important. I can throw numbers at you, but without reading what is on the slides, let me tell you that edge computing is a, is a hot topic. It's an up upcoming thing because more and more hardware devices you will be able to see in the world. IoT is a hot thing. And Sandarwan in his talk, he gave many examples of the, the drone example, the animal detection, why edge computing can be important. And the reason why we thought of teaching you this subject is because not everybody can do it. If it is something that everybody can do, well, the demand for that can be less, right? It's supply and demand. We don't have enough experts in this area. So if you become one of those experts, the demand for you as a professional is definitely high. That is why we selected this topic uh, to be made available by the University of Monotour to the general public. 
right? So when I say the demand is high, that means there are more job opportunities. As Dr. Dr. Anga mentioned, even if you don't go out of the country, you can do this work from here because it's design, right? So it's a very lucrative thing for you to be able to work for a foreign company and earning dollars. And those companies, the salary ranges are much higher compared to the local companies, as you can understand, right? So for a company, let's say, based in the US, if they hire an engineer, they will pay some X amount of salary. If they can find an engineer with the same skill set from Sri Lanka and willing to work from Sri Lanka, then the company does not have to pay X because the living expenses in Sri Lanka is much less. But then again, let's call, let's say the, the engineer in Sri Lanka gets paid less than X. Even that less than X is higher than the local company salaries. So these are some of the motivations that motivated us to teach this subject for you so that you can be one of those highly employable candidates and find um, good placements in this competitive job market. And other than that, you can see on the slide the, the significant growth of this area. You can read this. I'm not going to go into detail. But we believe that what matters for you is to get a job in simple terms and be highly employable, be a valuable professional in an area, in a niche area. As I said, not everyone can do it. In a niche area like edge computing, that is where uh, we come in to teach you this model, this content. And it's up to you to learn this properly and become that, uh, that professional who can add great value to an engineering organization. Right. So when you look at the global market, there are so many players. And these are some of the companies that uh, uh, play in the global area. So Sci-Fi has a presence in Sri Lanka as well. Uh, there are many other companies that, that is included in this slide and also not included in this slide. When you compare the global, global scenario into what we have here in Sri Lanka, we are far behind. So this is where we need the skilled professionals to take up these tasks. So I've extracted this data from the Export Development Board website. You can see the, the billion or even the trillion dollar industry. We have a, about half a billion industry as the entire country, right? So we need to improve this. And the reason why improving this is important is because if we can capture some of the product exports from the global value chain, then we, we as a country will be in a much better position. You can see when you compare countries like Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan, the difference between the product exports and the service exports is significant. Here, it's like six times. Here again, six to seven times, right? Ten times. But Sri Lanka, we are very close to each other. It's not even two times, not even 1.5 times. So this is what we need to address. We need to create high value high value products, value additions for that. That is where we can also contribute to our GDP. So if we can capture like 0.1% of a particular area, that is what I have shown here on the bottom right, whether it's automotive, whether it's telecom, we can capture 0.1. That will be a significant boost for, boost for the GDP as well. So how can we do it? We need people who are capable of implementing these things because right now, our major exports are things like tea, the apparel industry, cinnamon. This is not high-tech products, right? So as the University of Moratua, our objective is to teach the masses, teach the public also, which is why we are offering these courses to the general public. As Dr. Anga mentioned, we have a limit of the number of students that we can get into the state university system. That is not entirely decided by us lecturers. It comes from the UGC and this entire state university system. So. Without being restricted from that, we wanted to offer these courses to the general public. That is our motivation of teaching these courses. right? So of course, when we get people to teach this, there is a cost because we need to pay the lecturers. That is why we are charging a fee. But I hope the motivation is clear. Okay, so now that you have an idea about embedded systems, why it is important, why it is important to learn edge computing, and also our motivation for making these courses public, let's go into detail about what we plan to learn in this course. Yes. We'll start by giving you a, uh, we'll start by differentiating general purpose and embedded. So when you look at general purpose, this is what we mean. 
when you look at the picture, I'm sure it's clear to you that this is your day-to-day -day computer. It might not look like this. It might look like a, you know, like a laptop, but we refer to as general purpose computing to something that can run multiple applications. When you look at embedded systems, that is mainly specific to one application in most cases. You can see the point of sales device over here, a digital camera. So these are very specific applications, right? You cannot edit a Word document with a point of sales machine or a digital camera. But with a general purpose computer, you can even take pictures. Of course, if you have a webcam, you can take pictures. If you simply interface like through USB, like a card reader, you can accept payments. And also you can do a Word document as well. So that, that is general purpose computing. But embedded on the other hand, it is specific to one particular application. So here's a list of differences. The main thing that I want to highlight here is that when you compare general purpose to embedded, these embedded computing devices, they have a certain set of constraints. For example, the chipsets, the chipsets that are powering these embedded systems might not be as strong as the chipsets that power general purpose computing. Also, this will mainly be powered by batteries. So the camera is battery powered, the POS machine, well, yeah, you can connect, but can be battery powered as well. So these things run on low power budgets. We cannot consume as much power as a general purpose computing when we deal with embedded systems. So therefore, we need to be mindful about the energy efficiency of these devices as well. So this performance and the energy efficiency constraints combined, we say that embedded systems are resource constrained devices. So the reason why this distinction is important is because when we look at edge computing, some of the major challenges that we have is the limited computing resources. So we don't have the same amount of resources that we can have in the cloud. We have to be smarter. We have to optimize things so that it can fit into the resource constraint, the performance and the energy efficient and also real time processing. So in Sandhruvan's example, if the drone takes some time to process and say that we have to fly above a certain threshold and it, it is late in its decision making, then the drone might even crash before the decision is made. Right? So that's the problem. Therefore, we need to be fast. We need real time processing. So that's where these optimizations come in. We need to make those systems fit into our embedded, make those models, the machine learning models, fit into our resource constrained environments that are our microcontrollers. Right, so this is the challenge that we are trying to address. To address this challenge, we will teach you the content so that you can also take a machine learning model that we run in the cloud and deploy that in a edge device. So right now, when we look at the cloud, when it, whatever the domain that you work, it can be industrial transport environment, electronic devices, home automation, smart city. The common way of addressing machine learning is to develop a model, put that in the cloud and train it and make inferences. So these devices will be connected to the cloud. It will continuously send data to the cloud so that decisions can be made. Our objective is to take those models and put that in the edge device. That is where edge computing comes in. So the domain that facilitates this, we call it tiny ML, tiny machine learning. So I hope you see where the word, where the name tiny ML comes in, because the, these well, think of the machine learning models in the cloud as big models, like large models to optimize it to the microcontrollers. We need to make them smaller. So in other words, we need to optimize them. That is why we call it tiny ML. So it's an area, it's an applied machine learning field that brings the potential of machine learning to low cost, power constraint, and low performance edge devices. So that is, I, that is what I was telling you earlier about resource constrained environments. In the interest of letting you see what I'm pointing at, let me see if I can get the laser point. Ah, better, okay. So this tiny ML, uh, falls in the intersection of machine learning, embedded systems, and the applications, we'll be using concepts from this to develop our course projects. When you look at today's world, we have 
about, well, these numbers, of course, can change. We have some number of servers. We have some number of mobile devices. And as, as you can see, over billions of devices that are connected to the internet, especially IoT devices. But for someone to be able to use these things, you need to learn how to tackle them. And this learning comes by different courses. Maybe you do an internship. Maybe you learn on the job. You have to have some sort of learning materials. But the learning materials, in fact, works the other way around. To learn general machine learning, there are many courses. To learn mobile machine learning, there are, let's say, handful number of courses, not as many as general machine learning. And to learn tiny ML, there is even less number of courses. So this is where we come in to give you that knowledge. When you look at the domain of tiny ML, there are several things or several tasks that you can achieve. So through our courses, through these few courses, what we plan to do is teach you how to develop these models. We can look at things like semantic segmentation, especially in computer vision, object detection, image classification, gesture recognition. So there are different machine learning architectures as well that you can deploy to achieve these tasks. Now, in this course, of course, we cannot cover everything. We have to select what models shall we teach you. So all the model, modules, uh, sorry, all the courses that we teach through Skillsurf, one of our primary objectives is for you to be able to do something at the end of the course. So we, of course, have to teach theory, but we are not theory heavy. We call these courses boot camps. That is because we teach you a skill, right? So at the end of the course, oh, I think I contradicted myself. At the end of the boot camp, you will be able to develop some models that we have selected out of this. So how did we select these models? That is by taking inspiration, especially from the Apple ecosystem, uh, the Apple Watch, as well as features of the iPhone. So those who use an iPhone, of course, you know, we have face unlock. The person using the phone can look at the phone and then it unlocks. Another feature is Siri, your assistant. You can say, hey, Siri, and then say something and Siri will do it for you. Then in the Apple Watch, you also have the capability of gestures and getting things done through gestures. So different gestures will have different meanings. You can customize this as well. Right? So the watch will be able to detect what the gesture you made and take action based on that. Especially if you are driving and you want something to be done, you can simply do something with one hand while, of course, keeping the other hand on the steering wheel. And then it happens. Or else, well, if you are driving, you can just say, hey, Siri, and get, get it to do something. Okay. So taking inspiration from this, what are we trying to do in this course? We will be developing four projects with you. One is the colorimeter, project number one. So we'll go into detail about this in the next few slides. One is the colorimeter. One is gesture detection. Another is wake word detection. And another is person detection. So we will teach you the theory of de developing machine learning models and deploying them in edge computers using these four projects. At the end of the course, you will learn the theory. And also you will learn how to develop these models and deploy them in a in an edge device. So I hope our purpose is clear. Now we'll go into detail about these four projects, what exactly you will be implementing, and also our course outline through every week, what we plan to teach you. All right. So again, a quick reminder, if you have any questions while I'm speaking, feel free to drop them in the chat. Uh, we'll be answering them at the end when we uh, take on all the questions. Okay, let's look at these uh, projects briefly, one by one. Colorimeter. So it's we are basically doing color identification using our Arduino Nano, our Edge device, our hardware platform, and Edge Impulse. So we use Edge Impulse especially to visualize the outputs. You can see here when we bring our device closer to an object, it classifies between three colors. So we use the proximity sensor to detect uh, the nearby object. And then we try to classify the color between three colors. 
in this case red orange and yellow right so this is a classification problem how this works how to develop the model and how to deploy that in our edge device we will talk about project number two Project number two is our wake word detection model. And if you are wondering what a wake word is, that is, hey Siri, oh, hey Alexa, oh, hello Google. That is a wake word. The reason why we call it a wake word is that is how you wake up your assistant, right? So that is why we call it a wake word. Wake word detection model will develop a wake word detection model with TensorFlow and we will convert the model to a microcontroller compatible platform. And then we'll deploy that in our uh, Arduino Nano and then see how it functions. So we have simplified the application in this particular case. We are not going to say, hey, Siri or anything. We are going to say yes and no. So depending on whether you said yes or no, there'll be a light blinking on the, on the hardware device that indicates the accurate capturing of whether you said yes or no. So if you say yes, the light has to shine green. If you say no, the light has to shine red. You can also visualize this uh, by analyzing the sound that we are capturing through the microphone of our Arduino Nano BLE Sense and uh, see how it works. Okay, so your task is to differentiate. Is it a yes or a no? Right, so that is our wake word detection project. Project number three, that is gestures. So remember I showed you how the Apple Watch, the gesture recognition works. We are trying to implement something similar. In the gesture recognition tasks, we are going to use the IMU sensor that is available in our Arduino Nano. Okay, through the IMU sensor, we'll be able to detect the movements. And depending on the type of movement, we classify it as one gesture versus the other gesture. So we'll develop the model and then we'll optimize it to our Arduino Nano, deploy that and see. You can see here when you do the punching motion, it recognizes a punch. When you do the, you know, the strength or the strong arm kind of motion, it detects that. So we'll define a few gestures that we are going to capture and we'll develop the model to capture those gestures. That brings me to project number four. In project number four, we are developing a person detection model. What does it mean? Well, we will pretty much detect whether a person is in front of the camera or not. Okay. So again, similar to the other projects, we'll develop the person detection model with TensorFlow and we'll convert, convert that model to an MCU compatible platform. Here is what it will look like. So we uh, here what we are doing is, uh, this is our camera model module. Through the camera module, we, we sit in front of it and we cover the camera with some paper. When we cover the camera with the paper, of course, the camera is not able to see the person. Therefore, it says no person. When the camera is able to see the person, it says person. So similar to our wakeboard detection model, we indicate using red and green LEDs whether the person is there or not. So for this, we are adding a, a, a small camera module to the Arduino Nano and then doing the person detection. Right. Similar to our wake word, we can also visualize the output. So we'll analyze all of this. You will know why it functions because sometimes as engineers, we have no idea something why something worked, right? And well, of course, sometimes we have no idea why it didn't work as well. So rather than doing things blindly, we will analyze the results, the inputs, why it works, why it is working the way it is supposed to work, or why it is not working, and how to debug. We will work on all those things with you. Okay. All of this will be facilitated through this hardware platform. I mentioned this several times now. This is our tiny uh, ML development platform, the Arduino Nano 33 BLE sets. So it, it comes with a set of sensors and we can interface uh, several others on top of that as well. So we have uh, purchased several of these tiny machine learning kits that has this development, uh, this, this entire kit. You can see the uh, mainly the Arduino Nano BLE Sense, and there's a small development board that can interface the, uh, the camera module. So we purchased several of this. I'll tell you details about uh, 
if you want to purchase one of these, you can do that. Uh, we have some extras, so we'll be making them available to you. And if you get more requests, we'll have to look into purchasing these in bulk. So when we purchase this in bulk, it is more beneficial rather than you paying shipping costs and all that. So we'll place the order together so that uh, we can share the costs. Of course, um, it will be more beneficial or more economically viable for you when we place the order in bulk. So we'll get to those details, but this is the platform that we'll use throughout the rest of the course. So now these four projects, we will teach you how to develop. And to do that, we of course need to go through the course content. So as I mentioned, it's going to be an outcome oriented course, but the outcome is you now know. The outcomes outcome will be the four courses that I showed you. And for you to be able to do those four courses, you need to learn. So this will be a back and forth kind of a thing where we teach you some theory, you apply it, you make it work, then we teach you some more theory, you apply it, you make another project work. So it will go on like that for the four projects. And the course outline that we'll be following throughout this course that will take approximately two, two to three months for us to cover is this. So let me now go into a brief description about what we will cover in each and every week. So we'll have eight weeks, well, technically nine, if you count this one, but let's forget about this one, week one through week eight. We'll go into a brief description about what each week is going to cover. But before that, since I have been speaking now here for a while, in the interest of retaining the interest as well, let's go into a few questions that we got through uh, the Zoom chat and also Mentimeter as well. Kitmin, I hope that is okay. We'll uh, take a brief break to answer questions yeah. and we'll go through the rest of the slides. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, where do you want to start? Zoom chat or Menti? Uh, we'll cover the Zoom chat uh, first. Step. All right. Are we giving the presentation PDF? Yes, we'll make it available so that you can easily skim through. Uh, yeah, I think Kitmin already answered that. Uh, any prerequisites? Kitmin, do you want to elaborate on that? The prerequisites? Uh, sure. So, um... So prerequisites, um, as mentioned in the flyer for this course, we normally um, think that it like we find it useful if the participants have some uh, familiarity with Python programming. Since um, this year we are like planning to have almost like all the um, sections, machine learning. Uh, sections uh, using the Python programming language, um, and we'll also cover. We have a like separate day to cover like C plus plus programming. Uh, Abba will be covering that. Um, so um, yeah, that will be the only prerequisite like we'll expect. But if you um, uh, like, we'll be able to provide you resources with uh, getting familiar with Python if you need to uh, go through that as well. Uh, shouldn't be that much of a difficult task. So, yeah. Yeah. So we recommend that you have programming knowledge. Um, that will be helpful because we'll be, this is an intermediate level course, right? So therefore, uh, you will have to get up to speed really fast if you don't have that background, but we'll definitely help you with that. Okay. Uh, if you're not willing to put the time, so let's assume that you have very limited programming experience and you are not willing to put in the time as well to learn it, then you will struggle, right? So you need to be able to put in the time and effort. If you are an absolute beginner, you have very little uh, knowledge, but you have learned one, let's say you have done some coding with Python, then catching up the ML, uh, mod, ML concepts and deploying the models and all that, we'll teach you how to do. Because when I walk you through the weeks, you will realize that uh, we start from the basics of machine learning and develop one by one. So I would say, Kitwin, it's safe to say that uh, as long as you have programming knowledge, you should be able to tackle this, right? Yes. Yeah, I think that's safe to say. I hope you answered that. Then... Uh... Is that... At least the questions that I can see on uh, on Zoom is over. Oh, there's one more. 
uh, can we have the price of the learning kit and estimate? Well, we actually purchased the existing devices some like a couple of months ago. We'll have to check the price and let you know. So details about purchasing and all that, we will keep you informed uh, because this one, we did not plan on giving that much information to you because this is the first session. Uh, the first session is free of charge for everyone. Anybody can join. And we have a payment deadline by which you need to pay and enroll in the module. Uh, and once you do that, those are the people who will be purchasing the hardware devices. So once the payment deadline is passed, we will give you more details about the cost, how to purchase, what is the mechanism. We did not uh, plan on telling that here because that's that might not be relevant, especially if you are not taking this course, then it's not relevant to you because uh, only the people who are taking the course will be uh, eligible to purchase the, the, the hardware devices through us. Okay, so we'll send you more details with the cost, how to purchase that. Do we have any questions in Mendimeter? Yeah, there are four questions there. Okay. Um, I will cover those questions. Yeah, I'll stop sharing. Um, sure. Um, let me see if I can. Okay, I have the screen. Um, so it's visible, right? The Menti screen? Yeah, we can see it is. Okay, uh, so the first question was, uh, what are the free tools and how to find training data? Um, I think the tools will be covered in the slides uh, Dr. Subodh is presenting. And the training data will also be provided as part of the projects. Uh, like we'll be providing that in our platform that will, uh, Dr. Subodh will also be introducing that platform. Uh, um, the second question, I want to go for AI and electronic side uh, as I'm a currently an undergraduate at uh, Columbia University. Can you guide me about this? Um, maybe I think for you, the best thing is to reach out to uh, Sandaruan since uh, he has already successfully um, done this. Um, maybe Sandaruan, if you're still there, you can provide your email um, and the student can contact you. Uh, you can provide it in the chat, maybe. Um, that would be really helpful. Um, could you let us know the price of the hardware? Yes, uh, I think Dr. Subodha answered this. Uh, instead of Arduino BLE, can we use uh, an ESP32 module? Yes, uh, we looked into uh, maybe like using an ESP 32 device uh, for this course and even like uh, to do some of these other projects um, but there are only a limited number of uh, devices that support edge impulse and tiny ml uh, so we'll cover that in week four and uh, five actually um, because of that we are still sticking to the arduino module for this course but you're right um, there are uh, there are opportunities to use other devices and ESP32 is one device we can use. Um, I'm an undergraduate in ENTC, so I like my path in electronics and automation. So what are this? Uh, maybe Dr. Subodha can answer this um, since you are in the yes. MSc program. Well, uh, yeah, so we have a separate MSc program called Electronic and Automation. It's exactly with this name that you uh, mentioned. Uh, in this particular course, I think, well, machine learning is a huge part of automation, right? Even in the master's program, uh, we have a vision-based automation course that is taught by Dr. Ranga and Dr. Peshala. Uh, so this machine learning conversation, especially edge computing, is one essential component of automation. So definitely this can help you. Uh, so we are uh, planning to add this edge computing course for the next year's master's program as well. That is not finalized yet. Uh, when we introduce something to the university curriculum in a formal manner, that has to go through several, you know, this has to go through a process. So it doesn't happen instantly. So therefore that is yet to be done. But uh, this particular course has significant alignment with electronic and automation. And also the person who asked from University of Colombo saying that they, he, he or she would like to go into electronics and AI, this is a, this is a good combination. So the, the knowledge that you gather will definitely be helpful. 
So you can see the projects that we are doing, right? The projects, the colorimeter, the object detection, person detection, all of that can be components of automation. So machine learning can be used in multiple domains. If you are a person who is looking at the intersection of telecom and machine learning, maybe we might say that, okay, this might not be for you. Because most of the things that we teach here is related to like computer vision and getting data through IMU sensors, microphones, so that is not communication as such. But for the field that you're looking for, electronic and automation, this is a really good fit. I think that covered your question. Uh, yes, yeah. thank you, uh, Dr. Zaboda. I think uh, that covered, oh, there's now one more question. Uh, what role does AI play when it comes to cybersecurity? Okay, one more question for you. Yeah, I'll take that, yes. Um, well, the role right now that uh, what AI can play when it comes to cybersecurity area of edge compute. Okay. So when you look at security, uh, I'll, I'll answer security in general and then we'll come to edge computing. If you look at the major firewall vendors in the world, uh, let it or, or even security infrastructure vendors in the world, like you take CrowdStrike, um, any other company that is developing this, its infrastructure, they have a significant focus on machine learning. Because right now we are talking about things like deep packet inspection in a network. Um, we look at uh, preventing denial of service attacks, how that, how that happens. We look at metadata in a packet. We try to make inferences. And we are even talking about making computing on encrypted data, right? Uh, so there's a whole new whole area where people talk about running machine learning models on encrypted data and making meaningful things out of it. Because things like security and privacy are there. Because if you store some data in a database, most probably you will not be storing that in its original form due to privacy concerns. So this combination of machine learning and security is, is, is in most places. That's the focus of many infrastructure developers in the security domain right now because they are trying to automate this. Earlier, we had very simple rule-based systems, but now we are moving to more intelligent systems where rules are defined, right? Rules are not very flexible. When you define a set of rules, it's like an if-else statement. If this, do this. If not that, then if this, do that. So it goes like a hierarchy, right? It's a well-defined hierarchy of things. But due to the dynamic nature of the security area right now, these rule-based things are becoming more obsolete. It is, they are still, of course, it's not entirely gone. It's, they are still, but we need a better way of computing. So that is where machine learning comes into the picture that gives us that flexibility. We can make intelligent decisions out of it, right? So now when you look at the security and machine learning combination in general, and then you transform that into edge computing, the same set of concepts apply, right? So if you can do something in a more optimized, effective manner in an edge device compared to running something on a cloud, that's of course a good thing, depending on the application, right? And I can think of many applications where that is a good thing. You take CCTV, for example. So imagine a CCTV company that is developing CCTV. They want to detect if something is going to go wrong at that camera itself without the camera having to communicate with the cloud. So I'm sure you know, um, well, I, I just got some CCTVs for myself, for my home use. That device can work with a AA battery. It doesn't have to be connected to the, the electricity supply. It can work with a battery. And it can work for like one year with a AA battery, to two AA batteries. So what does it mean? That device can work for a long time with a low power budget. So now imagine uh, you need to run that device all the time. And at night, if you detect any motion, the device has to come live and capture the capture the feed, right? That's how it functions. Because at night time, you need to be able to see what the camera can see. So rather than continuously giving the video feed, if the device is smart enough to turn on when it detects some motion, that's a good thing. So that's an application that can be an application of machine learning. So now you see how these edge devices can be used to run machine learning on a low power budget and also using performance constraints. So that's not necessarily security, but rather a computer vision problem that enables security. But I think I said many things. 
that gave you an idea about how security and machine learning and edge computing can work together. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, let's take one last question and then move back. Now, what are the job opportunities we can serve with this knowledge examples? Yes, so... I think we are touching this uh, in the slides, skip me, the next slides. Okay, yeah, that's it. Okay. We'll answer that uh... when it comes to that point. Okay. I think we can hand it over then. Uh, thank you uh, for all the yeah. questions, everyone. Yeah, please keep them coming. I mean, we'll have another Q and A session uh, at once we are done with the slides. So we'll uh, we'll get to that. Okay. I think there are some more questions in the Zoom chat as well. So we'll we'll address that. Right. Okay. So this is where we stopped. I told you the four projects and what you will be covering in this course. But for you to be able to do those projects, you need knowledge. So how to give that knowledge? Well, that is what we plan to do through this curriculum. Week number zero is where we are right now. Um, this is the introduction, introduction to the department, our motivation, the industry lecture that is delivered by Sandarwan. So we specifically asked Sandarwan to talk because he was one of the people who took our first course. So Chatuni, Chatuni in the initial remarks mentioned that this is the first, the second time we are delivering this course to the public. Sandruan was one of the people who took the course in the first iteration. And uh, when we were looking for keynote speakers, because earlier what we did was we would take like a you know very senior person who's like a CTO of a company, and then he will come and talk about uh, how edge computing is used in their products. Well, in this case, we thought Sandruan is an ideal fit because he's a person who learned and the the, the material that he gathered from the first course was important for him as an engineer uh, at his work for Zone 24-7 or any other work that he's doing in the future. So that's why the industry lecture, we planned it like that. So it's relatable for you as well. He's just, just he's a student just like you in the first course. And now he's applying what he learned in the industry. I think uh, there cannot be a better story or a better fit for a uh, for an industry lecture than Sandarwa. And then the introduction to the course. That is what we are doing right now. Um, and then we have a comic to say that if you do not understand what is uh, taught in the course, we are not going to tell you. Uh, if you do not understand what is taught in the course at the end of this presentation, we, we are not going to tell you because we have already told you. Week number one. Okay, so this is where we start our main content, uh, where we go into technical details. We start by giving an intuitive introduction to machine learning. We'll differentiate traditional programming and machine learning. Uh, we'll differentiate AI, machine learning, and deep learning, because many people are using these words interchangeably, what they are. We'll go into an overview of deep learning, because most of the machine learning architectures that we use in this module will be deep learning architectures. Then we'll start our conversation mainly with a hands-on uh, kind of a task in week one itself by familiarizing, we, familiarizing you with Google Colab. Okay, so we'll give you an introduction to deep learning with Colab notebooks. We'll uh, tell you what uh, mainly PyTorch is, how it works. This is week number one. Then in week number one, we'll give you the first assignment. We typically, so those who have taken our courses, you know that uh, we release assignments soon, like in the earlier in the course, and then we work with you to develop or to address the problem statement given in the assignment. That's how we function. So we release it earlier and we give you more time and we develop or we work on the assignment together with you while you learn. Okay, so don't be, don't freak out saying that, oh my God, week number one itself, there's an assignment. Well, we release it earlier for that reason. Okay. Then week number two, we'll discuss assignment one. We'll iteratively develop it with you. And then we'll move into a conversation about TensorFlow which is a very valuable tool set, especially when it comes to machine learning. Then we look at some computer vision applications, right? Because there are computer vision projects that you need to complete in this course. We'll give you an introduction. Then week number three, we will look at some hot topics these days, that is generative AI. How to deploy, uh, how to use generative AI at the edge. Then assignment number two will also be released in week number three, that is building nano GPT from scratch using Colab. So you were family with you, you got family with Colab in the first few weeks, and now we are using it 
and the TensorFlow, uh, the playgrounds and the tools that come with it to develop a nano GPT. So this will be your own GPT that you are developing that is suitable for the edge devices. Now, at the end of week number three, you have a decent grasp of how the machine learning tool chain works on the cloud. Okay. And how to, how to optimize at least up to a certain level so that it fits on the edge. But from week number four onwards, we will kind of shift our attention into more of the hardware things. That is why you will learn about best practices in C++ for embedded applications. With this knowledge in week number four, we will, in week number four itself, we will give you an introduction to embedded machine learning and tiny ML. Okay. So now initially you learned about machine learning, computer vision with hands-on experience. Now you kind of learn the, the bridging technology that is C++ in week number four. And then we slowly transition into tiny ML, where you start optimizing your, your models into the hardware environment or edge computing. So by the way, it started raining heavily. So just a quick check. Am I still clearly audible? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear yes. you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's pretty bad right now. But anyway, we'll we'll manage. Okay, I hope there's no power cut. Fingers crossed. Ah, maybe we should think of adding fingers crossed as a gesture to our project. We'll see. So week number four, we'll talk about uh, tiny ML and. We'll, we'll talk about different types of development platforms for TinyML. Week number five, now that you have an idea about TinyML in week number four, in week five, we will look into Edge Impulse. So it's a development platform that enables you edge um, deploying machine learning on the edge that can be very helpful. So we'll get familiar with this Edge Impulse, plat edge impulse platform. So now that you are familiar with both TinyML and Edge Impulse, week number six, we will give you an introduction to the tiny ML pipeline using edge impulse. So we'll combine the two. Okay. So this is where we start putting things together so that you can actually deploy the machine learning models that you implemented in the first few weeks on the edge devices. So once you have that knowledge in week number six itself, we will develop our first hello world application using our Arduino nano device. Okay, so it's basically a sine wave predictor, actual versus predicted values. We'll talk about this. This is our hello world application in Arduino Nano. Then once you do the hello world, you have the idea of the entire end-to-end -end pipeline, how to deploy using um, Arduino Nano and the associated tool chain. With that knowledge, we will go into a deep dive of the four projects. To do that, we need to learn how to train and deploy neural networks in hardware devices. So that is why in week number six, we will look at deploying a small neural network in a STM32 development board with QBI. That is another tool that you will be familiar with. And that brings us to the four projects due to an issue in the animation. We are missing one. We are missing one project. That's too bad. So let me get that project and share the presentation again with you. Ah, much better. Okay. So the four projects. And again, we are missing the colorimeter title, but that's fine. You know what the project is, colorimeter. PowerPoint animations are to blame, but um, let's see if it comes up when I go through. Ah, it does. Okay. Problem with animations. Anyway. So these four projects I showed you earlier. Um, so we'll learn how to implement these projects and how to optimize it and how to deploy that in our Arduino Nano. That is our focus in weeks number seven and week number eight. So we'll create and implement a wake word detection model. We'll select the selection of data sets, training the model on Google Colab with TensorFlow Lite and evaluating the wake word detection model. We'll also implement the gesture detection model and come week number eight, we'll implement the person detection model. So this will not be rushed. I mean, if you're thinking that, okay, we are learning how to develop two projects uh, on the same week. Well, that is doable because we are giving you the in ingredients in the first few weeks. Once you have that, you already have developed part of the project. 
here what we are doing is only putting that together okay so this is our outline for the eight weeks and you will be given enough time to familiarize yourself if we feel like you need more time to digest certain parts of the of the topic we might even introduce like a buffer week in the middle so remember in one of the earlier slides i showed you week one two three and the starting date of the week as well so if we get requests from people we will consider that uh, maybe giving a gap we've already given some gaps maybe more gaps so that you can spend more time on on developing these models so we are flexible that way uh, we've allowed that flexibility and if you have taken any of our previous courses you know that has happened based on the participants request but we have developed the outline with our understanding of the level that you can capture the module but if we get feedback from the participants we will of course be flexible and during these eight weeks you will touch on several tools uh, google collab being one mockpe tensorflow edge impulse so here are some screenshots as well collab tensorflow playground edge impulse mockpe arduino ide of course you need to use that to program vs code uh, the professional id for coding so these tools you will be familiar with right so i think by now you should have an idea about what we teach you in this course and how we plan on achieving that that brings me to the last section of our of our uh, slides that is to explain to you what the course logistics are so in the rest of the few slides before concluding and of course before answering your questions i'll tell you what you can expect in the next few weeks so course logistics i introduced to you the four assignments when i was going through the course outline we expect you to complete at least 3 out of the four so 75% of completion we will not be uh, giving you a mark for the assignment we will tell you whether pass or fail the reason why someone can fail is that if you don't put any effort into doing an assignment that is the only reason you will fail if you put in the effort we will help you and you will be able to complete the assignment when we have the live sessions you can ask questions you can get help for your assignments that is completely fine okay so that's why i said as long as you have put in the effort you will be able to pass the assignments attendance it's not mandatory but uh, we recommend well that is because when you come to a live session you can interact with the lecturers you can ask questions you can get any doubts clarified you can get help for your assignments the only way you can do that is by taking part in the sessions so please don't think the thing because we are not making attendance mandatory you can refer to all the recorded content and do the course well you can theoretically you can but the learning experience will be much better if you come to the live sessions so we highly encourage you do so the one of the strongest things that we have at entc is the people okay so forget about buildings forget about infrastructure forget about everything else forget about the fact that we are in university of moratua it's the people when somebody comes into entc the whole ecosystem has structured such that you are encouraged to learn and do well that ecosystem is what matters if you look at a place like silicon valley and recently i saw the y combinator results are also out if you don't know what y combinator is that is the the most prominent accelerator program in the world that's based out of silicon valley and the infamous sam altman uh, altman who's now running open ai was the president of y combinator some time ago so those companies thrive or those ecosystems thrive because of the people so without a doubt the most critical advantage that entc or even university of moratua in general has is the people the human resource so if you come for the live sessions in person that is where you will get to interact with the lecturers who comes with the knowledge so we highly recommend you do that okay and that way you can get help to complete your assignments as well so here's the team these are the people that you will meet on a day to day basis when you go through the courses uh, and kudos to them uh, to the entire team they put in a lot of effort developing the content so afam 
who was previously at Meta, in other words, Facebook, and now a PhD student in Germany. Kipmin, who spoke to you a while ago, is who's a, uh, again a postgrad student at British Columbia, University of British Columbia, Canada. Abarajitan Abba, who is now a PhD student at UC San Diego. Damit, a research project officer in Singapore at NTU. Sahan, uh, who was one of our instructors for the previous course as well, who's a senior software engineer at WSO2. Pamudita from Sydney. Pahan from Paracum Technologies. Chatuni, again from Paracum Technologies and Sanjana and Devnit, who are uh, third and final year undergraduates at ENTC, and myself and Dr. Angle. So you develop this structure so that we have a continuation as well, because Sanjana and Devnit, when they go to the industry, when they become uh, postgrad students, so go to the industry, well, they can continue this task. So we've developed that pipeline so that we can look to the future as well. So we have people uh, in the industry for a long time coming in. We have fresh graduates, we have current students. All of us will be combined uh, to make this a memorable experience with. So we have designed the course to be outcome oriented. I think that's uh, quite obvious from what we talked about. We have real world applications and the fundamentals are taught using those real world applications. And the curriculum and content is custom made. So we have not copied from anywhere else. We have taken good things out of different places, but this curriculum, this particular one, you will not find anywhere else. Okay, and this, this progress or the, the flow of the lectures, this we can say with confidence, only this course will be able to offer that. And that is taught by a highly qualified panel of lecturers. And final remarks. Uh, so the way that you can enroll in this course is through the learning management system that uh, we have developed. The course will be conducted in English. Sinhala and Tamil explanations will be given as required. This will be a combination of recorded lectures and live discussions on Sundays. The reason why we are taking this approach is that when you have a recorded content, you can post the video. Then you can develop some part of it. If you want to go back, you can go back. That will be covered through recorded content. The live discussions will be there to work as a, as a working session with you. That's one thing. And to clarify your questions, that's another. And also to help you with your assignments. So that live conversation is essential for those things. The recorded content will help you understand some of the theoretical, theoretical content and also will guide you on how to develop your projects as well. Right. So it's going to be what we call blended learning or hybrid learning where recorded content is there and we uh, kind of top up, top up those recorded content using the live discussions. Right. And once you complete the course successfully, uh, you will be issued a certificate by the University of Moratua. Uh, so this course is approved by the University Senate. So therefore, you will get a valuable credential. Um, from the university that is considered to be the best engineering college in the country. So we'll, that credential will be valuable for you as well. So once you learn it, what can you do? I think one person asked what, what is the job availability or the market like right now? So one answer we already gave you, Sandru one is working at zone 24 seven and there are several projects that is done at zone uh, that is addressing or that is using machine learning in edge computing. You saw some examples as well, especially the medical application. Other than that, there are several companies. I mentioned the global companies. There are several companies in Sri Lanka who, who, who is doing edge computing solutions. And the problem that when we talk with them, the problem that they highlight is that they don't have the skill to recruit. So if you're thinking that Sri Lanka lacks opportunities, what Sri Lanka lacks mostly is not opportunities, actually the skill that can utilize those opportunities. So it's a positive cycle, right? If we have more skilled people, then more opportunities will come in. And then those opportunities will demand more skilled people. Then we have to generate more skilled people. Because we have more skilled people, again, more opportunities will come. So it's a positive cycle. That is what we want to develop. Because most of the complaints that come from students, well, there's not enough opportunities. Well, there is. There is more than enough opportunities. You need to have the skill. And for that, you need to work hard and become valuable professionals for the industry. So by teaching these niche areas, our objective is that. 
So I think we highlighted this earlier as well. So there are many opportunities in the in the industry. Our objective, I mean, through SkillServe, what we are trying to do is to teach these subjects and feed that into the industry. And we we want to get commitments from the industry saying that those who complete the courses will get interviewed by these companies. So in fact, for one of the previous courses, we did the system very long. Uh, that's an FPGA related course. You might have seen that. We got a request from, uh, I think it's okay. Okay, is it okay to mention the company name? Yeah, I think it's okay because uh, Synopsys was one of the, uh, the sponsors or the facilitators of that course. Uh, we got a request from them asking whether the people who completed the course, whether they can get the CVs. And why? Well, that is to interview. Uh, so that they can offer internships and entry level uh, positions depending on the level of experience. So we are planning to do similar uh, arrangements for other courses as well. So I cannot promise you that something like that will happen for this course as well, where we directly feed the people who complete the course into an industry interview. We are trying to do that. This can happen like backwards as well, backwards in the sense once you complete the course, People get to know about it and they request the CVs from us. So we don't have a commitment right now. I don't want to give you false hopes, but I told you one of the previous courses, we have received a request right now and we are working on it, right? So that is our objective, to develop that pipeline where the skilled people can directly enter the industry. Because when you look at the future, the four to five year industry, the, the four to five year engineering degree can, can change, right? So we need to be ready for that change as well. That is one of the, motivations for developing these things. Okay, so I think I answered the question, what can you do with what you learn? And also um, the, the person who asked the question in the Zoom chat. Moving on, uh, now the next thing that you need to do, uh, Kitmin has given that link in the Zoom chat as well. You will have to go to learnova.skillserve.lk. Okay, let me stop sharing slides and uh, let me go to the link and show you how it works. Right. So we are here. When you go in, uh, I will log in with, uh, with my temporary credentials. You can sign up if you don't have an account. The process will be pretty straightforward. We'll log in. And when I go to program catalog, you can see the um, you can see the, uh, the the subjects so the the courses that are available. These are some of the courses that we did in the past. Embedded machine learning for edge computing. So you can purchase it through here. Right. So you purchase through here. You add your details and then uh, check out, and then you will be taken to a payment gateway, and through that you can pay and enroll. Okay. So we have. Uh, a partnership with IEEE, where IEEE members get a certain amount of discount. I think that was communicated to you by IEEE. If you are a member, you should be receiving their emails. And in that email, it was mentioned uh, the, the amount of uh, the discount and how to utilize that. So if you have any questions, we have given you contact emails. You can get those questions clarified uh, through them as well. Okay. So please follow the instructions. It's pretty straightforward. Simply you can go step by step. Uh, when we develop these courses initially, like for example, for the first iteration of this course, there was a very complicated way of playing, pay. But now we have simplified that by developing this online platform where you can uh, where you can pay using credit cards as well. Uh, if anybody wants to do a bank transfer, you don't have a credit card, reach out to us. We will send you instructions. But I think uh, paying a credit card Using a credit card will be more convenient for most of you, especially those who are in the industry. Uh, that way you can facilitate it. Of course, you can pay using a debit card as well. Um, so those, those all those options are there. All right. So that is about moving forward. And all assignments, can, oh, oh yeah, by the way, important thing. Now, if you're thinking that you need to purchase the hardware kit or the Arduino Nano kit to do anything, well, that is not the case. You can do all the assignments without hardware. You can do the designing tasks. You can see it in action as well. But if you want to touch and feel something, then we recommend you get it. But you can still earn the certificate. You can cover the material, cover the content, earn the certificate 
without hardware that is perfectly doable. But if you would like to purchase the hardware to deploy the developed models, we will be giving you instructions. I mentioned this earlier as well. So this screenshot gives an idea about the cost. Then we took the screenshot. This might have changed now, depending on the stock availability. We'll give you a Google form so that you can fill, uh, make the payment separately. So the course fee is separate. If you want to purchase the Arduino uh, tiny machine learning kit, that fee is separate because that is optional. All right. Yeah, I think I mentioned this earlier, so no point in going through that again. Uh, we'll create a WhatsApp group and we'll send the announcements in the WhatsApp group so that uh, I believe almost everyone is using WhatsApp. So that will be a convenient way for us to keep in touch with you. Uh, so the course administrators, the lecturers will send you information about announcements through WhatsApp. Uh, once the payments are complete, we'll gather all the people who have paid and then we'll create the WhatsApp group. You can visit this link for more details. This was the same link that you used to register as well. So there's nothing new. Okay. So I think that's what I had to cover mainly through the presentation. I wanted to give you an idea about what the difference between embedded systems and the challenges of edge computing. Then we went into the details about the four projects, how to facilitate those projects and how to give you the knowledge to, those four, to do those four projects we talked about. And then finally, we talked about the course logistics. So with that, let's move into another round of Q&A. Are there any other questions? Um, there was one more question on Menti, but there I don't think there were any other questions on Zoom. Let me double check. Uh, I have a yeah. I have a direct message, uh, Kitmin, that is asking, can we get the recording for this session? Yes, the recording will be available on the same link. So if you are not sure what I am referred to as the same link, it is, wait for it, it is this one. Same link that you used to register. Uh, the video will be uploaded to YouTube and will embed that video in the web page. So you can refer to it. The slides will also be made available. Yes. Sorry, Kitmin, I interrupted you. You were going to say about uh, the Mentimeter question. Yeah, I think, yeah, there's a few questions we have on Menti. Um, maybe I'll just please share the screen. Um, okay, um, yeah, so there's a few questions coming. The first one, I think, yeah, this is a good question. Um, so the weeks uh, in the slides that uh, Dr. Subodha presented, uh, the weeks were starting on Monday. It's basically to uh, mention the uh, week start date of the week. However, on the website, uh, the sessions are on uh, Saturdays and Sundays, and uh, we'll be giving the exact like um course schedule all the session dates and the live sessions and everything once uh, the uh, enrollment has ended and the course has started but just to clarify those were the start date of the week so every week uh, we are start uh, we just mentioned the start date of that week and what is being covered in that week um thank you for that question um if you clarify that, uh, in a, uh, oh, yeah, sorry sure. to interrupt you Kitmin, i'll clarify that i think uh uh i took over sharing uh sure. the person is asking for this uh, for the interest of others who did not understand the question uh, the question is about this uh, this 24 june 1st july these are mondays i think that's what the confusion is uh, we will have the live session on sundays just like what we are doing today but we have mentioned the start date as a monday because we will be releasing the recorded content you will have the entire week or even multiple weeks to watch the content and come prepared for next Sunday. That is why we added it like this. So recorded content will be made available in advance so that you can complete that throughout the week and then come for the Sunday class for a discussion. That is what why we added the start date. So you can think of it like this. You can think of you have time to cover these topics starting 24 June. And once you do the recorded content, you cover it coming next Sunday 
next sunday we'll have a live conversation we'll go through a summary of the recorded content and also we'll clarify any questions you may have we'll work on the assignments with you together so that is the structure of the course kitvin back to you yeah thank you um yeah thank you for that clarification that's uh, exactly um what we need to clarify there and uh, the second question here is about opportunities for masters in sri lanka related to machine learning and built systems um dr subhra do you want to comment on this yes uh, yes well uh, i have not done a deep dive into all the masters programs available in sri lanka but i can tell you what happens at moratua uh, so at our university each department offers masters programs when it comes to machine learning and electronics machine learning component is taught both at the electronics department we have a masters as i mentioned earlier electronics and automation and this edge computing will be one part of it for the upcoming intake that is the next intake that we plan to advertise um early next year so it will take about approximately 6 more uh, months before we start the uh, start the course uh, that conversation is currently uh, ongoing that will definitely have a direct relationship with this uh, the module whether it's this exact one or something else because we have a different curriculum for that uh, that will that is yet to be seen other than that um if you look at the computer science department the computer science department that is another department in university of moratuar there are masters programs especially on ai and data science but there is no electronics component in it but if you are doing an ai data science only without really worrying about electronics or edge computing that can be a good fit as well so those are uh, the masters programs that we have at university of moratuar uh, that can align with machine learning and if you want to align with the electronics component as well the master of electronics and automation is the best fit keep me yeah yeah uh, thank you uh, for that answer um so the next question um is regarding discounts for undergraduates um i think we have the i triple e discount available so uh, if you are an i triple e member you are eligible for that discount and uh, regarding further discounts we'll actually check uh, with uh, we'll like uh, have a decision on that and we'll share the enrollment details via email and if there are any other eligible discounts we'll let you know uh, but definitely the i triple e discount we have already um agreed to the terms of that and uh, we have provided that uh, in the uh, online platform as well yeah. i think that is yeah, actually we wanted yet. to yeah we wanted to see the amount of interest that we can gather because uh, deciding on that and setting that up on the lms because it's all automated right that takes effort so therefore yeah. if there is no interest why take the effort basically Uh, so yeah. depending on the interest that we gather we will be making decisions based on that uh, so we'll keep you informed all the enrollment details will be sent to you as an email so as long as you registered then we have the list of emails of those who registered we will send be sending you instructions between now and the uh, the enrollment deadline okay so that's yes. how it will work yeah. um, are there i think that's everything yes Yeah, I think we answered this question as well. Are there any discount for university undergraduate? We'll uh, it's the same answer that I, that we gave earlier. We'll let you keep you informed. Yeah, I think we can wrap up uh, the question session. I don't see anything else coming in, and I think everything in the chat has been addressed as yeah, well. Yeah, I have. I have two direct messages keep in on the chat. Uh, can we get the recording for this session? Yes, we will be making it available. when will the final list of students be published well when you enroll uh, by making the payment then uh, that will be you will get a confirmation email uh, from uh, from the platform itself that means you are enrolled and once we pass the enrollment deadline we will create the whatsapp group including everyone who has already enrolled okay 
So we, we are using two words here. One is registration and the other one is enroll. Registration is like an expression of interest. That is what you did so far. Enrollment is where you pay and get the course. Uh, so once you enroll, we'll create the WhatsApp group. That will be a that will be another confirmation for you that your payment has been received. But even before that, the platform will automatically generate and send you um, an enrollment confirmation as well. So the final list of students be published. We don't plan on publishing the list of students anywhere, but uh, that's due to privacy reasons. We don't want to disclose anybody's personal information. But when you see yourself in a WhatsApp group, that is kind of like an indi indication that the payment deadline has passed. And now we are ready to um, teach the course and go with the timeline. So 24th June will be the starting week. So before that, the group creation and everything will be done. Um, yeah. Okay. I think I don't have any questions in my chat. So um, I'll just cover this last detail before we wrap things up. Uh, so we are offering this free workshop on uh, generative AI, uh, very hot topic. Um, I think everyone here probably knows about chat GPT. And um, we wanted to offer this free workshop uh, with some hands-on experience, hands-on sessions as well. Um, and uh, we, uh, you have like, if you haven't already registered, there's uh, four days left to register. Um, and um, yeah, there's a good panel of uh, lecturers. Um, we'll be teaching um, very experienced people who have worked at, I think, like some of the top, top companies uh, for machine learning, data science. Um, yeah. Um, so please consider registering for this as well. Anything to add, uh, Professor Wood? Yeah, so this is something uh, separate, separate to this particular course. Uh, this is a one-day uh, free workshop that uh, we are delivering. That's mainly on generative AI. Uh, so you, I think we can, they can still register, right? It's not, uh, yeah. the, the deadline is not passed. No, it's not passed. Right. So this will be happening next week. Uh, this has nothing to do with edge computing, by the way. This is yeah, yeah. the focus will be on generative AI. Yeah. Yes. Um, just a free thing uh, available for everyone. Um, yeah. I think the details about the like all the details have been covered. Um, shall we wrap up? Yeah, I think we can. We plan for a two-hour session, and we are right on time. So unless I don't see any other questions coming in the chat as well, we can wrap up. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Subodh. Uh, thank you, Dr. Anga and uh, Sandrua for uh, the talks today. And uh, thank you everyone for attending. Um, so we look forward to having you uh, here and we got I think, like 150. Uh, registrations and out of that like 40 plus people were there in the call today and many people could not come in person for this session so for them we'll be making this recording available and we'll keep in touch uh, so there's still time if uh, somebody could not get registered you can inform your friends uh, ask them to because now you cannot register but still by going to the web page once we set up the instructions by going to the web page anybody will be able to enroll so it doesn't mean that only the people who registered will be eligible to enroll. That is not the case. We gathered registration so that we can keep you informed about this session and also what is going to happen in the future. But even if someone did not register, that person will be able to enroll. So if you have a friend who could not register, ask them to visit the webpage. The, recorded, the recording of this session, the slides and the payment information, including any, disc any, any information about discounts and all that, will be available on the web page. And so therefore you still have time until the payment deadline that we mentioned. Uh, keep stay tuned to our social media pages as well. And then uh, any email communications that we will send you. So we don't plan on spamming you with multiple emails. We'll send you a few just, as, just to send you details. And as reminders, other than that, uh, you can refer to the web page to get the details. So we are happy to see the enthusiasm from all the participants who came today. It's great to see all of you. And we hope that uh, we'll get to uh, see you from day two. That is uh, the June, uh, starting the week of June 24th. We'll, we look forward to see, seeing many of you in that session.
So thank you everyone again. Um, and we look forward to having you in the in the when we start the course as well. Thank you. Have a good rest of your Sunday.